Serverless backend computing is a way for developers to host their code without having to deal with servers or any of the operations around server hosting in general. Usually as a developer, you have to set up a lot of infrastructure in order to host your code so end users can securely access your code. There really are servers. It's just that you don't see them as a developer. The, the servers are transparent to you. They, you. they just don't exist to you. All you have to do and all you have to worry about is uploading your code to the cloud provider. The cloud provider will then do everything else. They'll load balance your code. They will auto scale the code. They will make sure that users can route to it successfully. And if there's errors, they take care of it for you automatically. So it's pretty straightforward if we just take a look here to see we've got your, we've got your user right here. That's the user. They need to make an API call. They're usually on a front end like a mobile app or a web app. They're making an API call over to your server code. Now, the good news is once we get into the serverless zone right here, the serverless area, that's where everything else is magic. You don't have to do anything. It's all taken care of for you. The cloud provider will automatically load balance with the API gateway. And then here's your code right here. This is all the, all the stuff that you have to worry about is right here is just your source code. Usually it's going to be some JavaScript, right? Uh, it could be something else. Uh, and it, it basically could be anything. It's whatever the cloud provider supports. Uh, in the case of AWS Lambda, they basically support everything. And so you just upload your code to them, and then they auto scale it. Uh, and they automatically route everything. And then everything else is transparent to you as a software engineer. As a software developer, I really just want to write code. That's all I want to do. So I write, write the code and then pass the code off to the server to take care of. In serverless computing, that's basically what I get to do with the developer. I just write some code and write in code and then I upload it to the cloud vendor and then they take care of everything else. So the idea of serverless, of course, right? We were just talking about that serverless. There actually are servers, but you don't see them and you don't have to deal with them, which is fantastic. So I'm a software developer. I like writing my code here. Uh, usually it's gonna be like, uh, I'm writing code, so we've got some JavaScript. And then I want my user to be able to access that code. And without serverless, the way I have to do it now is I have to set up a server over here on the side. I need to upload my code and then I need to make it run in a server. Uh, I might have containers as well. Um, then I also need to set up DNS so that way my user will know where my server is. So we've got some DNS here, some DNS. And what that does is it allows me to set up a domain name. And I also need a certificate for TLS connections. So I also need a whole nother layer for security. So that way the user can validate and download the cert with a certificate authority chain. Uh, then finally, I can make a connection and exchange uh, a connection with the cipher on the server. That's like the absolute minimum. And that's with no redundancy, right? And so you also probably want to add a load balancing layer as well so that way uh if you know your server fails you'll probably have another server set up and running uh, there's just so much going on and so that's a lot of work that you have to do as a software engineer in order to get your code to host uh, on an end user just just ridiculous to, to be able to do that so instead what you can do instead of doing all of that you can just ask a cloud vendor over here uh, so let's say this is, you know, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Azure, uh, and then you just upload your JavaScript here, uh, and then your end users can fetch uh, the code uh, and execute it, and Microsoft and Amazon and Google will automatically take care of the rest for you. They take care of uh, load balancing, uh, copying the code, and all you have to do as a developer is upload your code, and that's the whole thing. That's all I want to do. I just have to write my code, and then I upload it to the vendor, the cloud vendor, and then they take care of everything else. If we're going to look for serverless providers, there are actually a lot of them out there. In fact, the first one you might not know was, in fact, it was Google. Google is the first serverless provider where they provided Google App Engine, which is as serverless as you can basically get. You upload your Python code to App Engine, and then they take care of everything else. Uh, now, you've also got Amazon with uh, Lambda, their Lambda functions. Now, Amazon's the biggest cloud vendor in the industry, right? So if you, uh, by a matter of numbers and probability, you're probably already using Amazon. And so Lambda functions are available to you to deploy your code. Um, and then you've got, uh, as well, we've got cloud functions with IBM and then Azure functions with Microsoft. From my memory and experience, 
uh, I, you know, I've used Google, they've done a really good job, they make it really easy. Uh, and then also Azure fits into that easy side of things, I would say. Uh, and then Amazon, they make it the most difficult. They just do, it's really difficult. And you always run into security uh, access control issues with the Amazon and it's a really, it's a big challenge. From an ease of developer experience perspective, I would say definitely Google and uh, Microsoft give you the best outcome from that. Um, you also get a pretty good experience here with Cloudflare workers. Just pointing out real quick that there are actually two big differences. While Amazon and Google and Microsoft have similar infrastructure, you're gonna see that Cloudflare workers are actually a little bit different because they're more of an edge compute where your code, you upload it to them and they distribute your code around the world. So that means that their end users are gonna have a much better user experience from a performance perspective because the code is gonna execute right next to where the user is. And so they're gonna get a better experience. There are different attributes to serverless. When we are looking to upload our code and have the cloud vendor take care of all our operations for us, serverless is the way to go, that serverless backend or that serverless computing, where we want the cloud vendor to, to take care of all the things for us. And guess what? There are several different aspects. Uh, I would say there's three main sort of attributes that you can assign to serverless and the idea with serverless uh, is, is pretty powerful. So you get something extra with edge, something different with functions, and then a different kind of runtime with containers. So the idea with edge compute, your users, uh, they're around the world, right? And so you've got a user over here, you've got a user over here, you've got a user over here. And in order to give them the best possible experience, you want your code to be executing right next to the user. So you want your code right next to the user. And that's what the idea is behind edge. So you've got serverless where you upload your code and then edge adds an extra aspect to it by uploading your code to all the data centers globally. And so now your code can run right next to each user. And that is the best possible experience I can imagine from a performance perspective and also operations, because guess what? Servers fail, uh, even though you're not dealing with them, it's possible there is some user interruption. It is significantly less impactful if your servers are distributed globally, one only one of your, of your users will be affected versus all users globally if just one of the regions fails. So edge is more powerful. Functions, the idea with functions here is that it's going to be um, more of an opinionated framework, right? And so you really upload just your code, but it has to work within the vendor's code framework. Usually in this case, it's going to be just some JavaScript, and then you have to manage and deal with an incoming request, and then you uh, provide a response object at the end, and then that will be used. And so really you're developing into the, uh, the, the vendor's framework for the most part. Um, and that is going to give you the best possible abstraction from having to deal with anything because you're really only uploading your code and that makes your life as a developer way better. Uh, there is another approach because this is not very flexible. Um, the other approach is uploading a container here where we, uh, you know, you can upload like a Docker container. Uh, it could be, you can fill it with whatever you want, sort of any kind of container. Uh, and then you just need to make sure to expose a port. You have to do a little extra work because now you're hosting a server and you need to bind to a port and the container needs to understand how to route that. And so there's a little extra work, but this is more flexible because you can basically run whatever you want. You run uh, like Python or JavaScript or Rust or a binary and it will be automatically taken care of. Some vendors like Amazon will abstract even the container layer. So all you have to do is upload a binary and that binary just needs to listen to a port. And so they kind of help you from that perspective. We had a comment here that asked about why serverless is better than a hosted machine with a CDN layer sort of in front of my app server. Now, you should totally do that. That actually totally makes a lot of sense. It's really powerful because what you're doing is using a CDN here in order to route your users uh, they get to connect to a close region and then it's proxied back over into your app server. And so that actually makes a pretty good experience from an end user perspective, but it doesn't take away what serverless actually provides. Serverless is um, going to give you a lot more. For first, for example, you've got your app server here. You still have to manage your app server. You're still dealing with the server. You have IP addresses. You might have downtime. So you need to have redundancy built in. You need to do load balancing. You need to make sure uh, the apps are up and running and they're all uh, they're, you're monitoring them. And then if something goes wrong, they can auto recover or you have to deal with that. So this just a lot of extra work that you have to do here. Now with serverless, you, um, you're, you're not going to have to deal with any of that right? 
And so this layer here, your app layer, where you're dealing with all of that code, you just don't have to deal with it anymore. It's gonna be a thing that is just not something that is any part of importance. It's gonna be automatic. And that's what serverless does. It takes care of that for you. So you still, like it's still a good idea to have a CDN in front uh, because that does help abstract. There's a proxy layer. To, it takes care of you know, the TLS, the handshakes um, and some other securities. So it's nice to have that sort of uh, removed from your uh, accessing your server directly. Uh, so if that is what you have running now and you don't have a CDN, so say you only have the app server running um, and you're not using a CDN, then definitely for sure throw a CDN in front of it uh, because that's going to uh, protect you a little bit more um, and it will also be a little bit faster for the end user, uh, but usually it's going to be roughly the same speed and performance. Oh, there's one there, there's one case though here where the CDN will help you actually a lot uh, is if you uh, enable the caching. So usually with an app server, you have an API, it's going to be cacheless. You can't cache anything. So it's going to be passed through. And that's what the CDN would do for your app server. However, it's possible that you might be able to send in some cache control headers from your app server here in order to allow the CDN to cache that data. So then the next following request that the user makes or another user makes, that, that, uh, that endpoint, that URL that you cache will be a lot faster for that user. So there are some benefits and some wins that you can get as well from a CDN that will improve performance. But the whole idea of serverless is just the operations. You don't have to deal with any ops uptime or, or routing or load balancing. That's the main point of serverless. If you haven't launched the serverless instance before, let's give it a shot. I'll show you how to do it. We'll use Cloudflare because they make it a nice, easy walkthrough. And uh, all you have to do is click a few buttons. So just make sure to sign up with Cloudflare and then log in. You'll get a, your dashboard here. Click on workers here in the, in, the, in the left hand, workers and pages. Click on create. Let's create a worker and then just click save. Uh, and then look, this is, that's it. That's the hard part. And so now you have uh, some code. Um, and what they do is they give you a little example with the hello world here. So let's kind of zoom in just a little bit so we can see it. And this is the code that gets executed when a user fetches uh, the API. And so we just start with that, we click finish. Um, and then what it's gonna do is it'll uh, deploy your code. Oh, it's been deployed to the region Earth. And that's one of the cool parts about Cloudflare. When it comes to a functions perspective, it will deploy your code everywhere to all of their data centers. Usually with a serverless vendor provider, they don't do that by default. You have to do a lot of extra work. Uh, Cloudflare makes that really easy. And so all we have to do, see they even give you a nice little dev URL here. So I click on this and then it will say, hello world. So my function was actually executed, which is really cool. And I'm kind of curious how fast how fast is it executed? All right, so we got 17 milliseconds. That's pretty good. So it's kind of hard to see, but that's the that's the response time here. Uh, we got a 17 millisecond uh, response time for loading the page. We can try again and again, 16, 14, 13, 14, 17, 12. Pretty good amount of latency. And that means that my JavaScript code has been deployed to all the Cloudflare regions. It's serverless. I don't know where the server is. I don't have to. If the server crashes, it doesn't matter because Cloudflare and the serverless idea, everything's taken care of for you automatically.